Hi. One, two, three. The cinema is my life. It's a way to communicate com completely, like it's a second language. I think it's a, an amazing way of telling super uh, strong messages and uh, more impactant uh, feelings in general. So, Even when you change uh, just uh, the mind of one, you change the world. Yeah, I don't imagine uh, my life without cinema. When I was the first time I was 19 and I looked at Stalker, uh, това наистина отвори големи пространства. Просто видях, че аха, киното може и това да прави. I think movies can tell stories in a way which is like way more uh, approachable for so many people. It, it is verbal, it is visual, there's audio, there are like all these elements which together create the emotional effect. I would like to uh, give uh, with uh, my movie the, this message of awareness, awareness of, uh, we'll speak a lot of inclusion, of the inclusion of different, you know, colors of the skin or sexuality, and that's great. But one thing that is completely taboo to speak about is mental illness. You know, when uh, even in our own families, when we have somebody that is suffering from uh, mental illness, like borderline syndrome, you know, bipolarism, or many others. So it's hard to speak about it. We hide it or we, we don't say it. To care about the story and to focus about uh, uh, the relationship between people and also how to describe how, how like uh, deep is a feeling with the use of music, with the use of sounds and with the use also of time, like stretching time, r relaxing, uh, releasing, because relationship is also based on that. Uh, the Sunshine Cake is a short film and it is a part of nine short film sequence uh, which is called uh, Why Does This Appear? And uh, this is silent musical film created together with director Christianas Dirce and contemporary music ensemble Synesthesis. So our aim was to create equally uh, important parts of music and cinema. And this film was created out of uh, nine people memories. We ask for questions about the first memory, about the uh, memory with a sand, uh, earliest memory, and then after a month we uh, call them again and ask the same questions, and then we compare those two interviews, and Christianos wrote a script out of it. And then uh, he wrote a script with a timeline, I wrote a music with no image, then we made a, a filming process, and then editing and stuff, so everything was very step-by-step step and very connected. Actually, this piece of uh, this project, which is shown here, is uh, my childhood memory about my birthday cake and sunshine. So it's a nice connection, I think, in the process because I'm a costume designer here and also they used my memory. So the film uh, is about this young woman called Caroline. Um, she is standing on a roof, on the roof of the most beautiful and big house of a small village. No one seems to know about her, no one knows who she is. Uh, she seems to have things to say, and that's what the film is going to tell us. Three main themes that I, I wanted to explore. The need of being seen, recognition. The ultra-modern uh, loneliness, uh, feeling invisible to everyone around. And the uh, very negative effects than a, a crowd or a group can have on, on something very quickly. My movie is about this guy who is in like around his 50s and he decides that now is the time to learn how to how to longboard dance. And well, he has no idea because like he have never stood on a board before. And he not just wants to try to learn it, but he also wants to like enter a competition, like an international big longboard dancing competition. And uh, he finds a teenager who is willing to help him. So it's the story of this guy, but also this teenage girl who is like has her own issues, and this unlikely friendship actually helps both of them to deal with their own stuff. So this story is very, very important for me because it's a, obviously it's about this beautiful subculture, but it's about so much more. It's about connecting. It's about how to connect with people. Because this is my experience, but I think many, many people have this same experience that nowadays sometimes it's really hard to really connect. And even inside your family, with your old parents or your best friends, sometimes like verbally telling, sharing what you feel, what you want, what you need is super challenging. And therefore, we come up with like other ways 
like sometimes very creative ways how to connect. And if you can find your language, like you won't feel alone. And that's actually the message what we want to like, like uh, give to the people who, who, who watches the movie. It was a really short story uh, to do efficient and uh, the message that I will uh, direct to the public to make uh, them uh, reflectionate about it, to be more attentive to the life in general, to the nature, to, to be more connected to the, 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 the real important stuff. The story of Summer of Birna is a story about love, about the relationship between um, uh, Birna and um, um, Oh, santo Dio. <laughs> Edoardo? Edoardo? Oh, shit, Edoardo? I, think I, I don't remember. I, I thought it's Roberto, but maybe Roberto. I don't remember. I don't remember. Sorry. I don't remember. I don't remember. Porca paletta, aspetta. Oh. Fermi tutti. No. Uh, cut, cut. I, I don't remember the name of my, my, my role. Di giuro. No, 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 Giulio, Giulio. I'm sorry. Uh, the story of uh, Summer of Virna is a story about love, about the relationship between uh, Giulio and Virna. But uh, it's a story about a crisis. My film, Kukic, the end of the is a story about anti-utopia, a visual anti-utopia. We have one world that has a problem with electricity. And in this world, electricity is produced from the flowers. Until good. Обаче, за да се поддържат тези цветя, за да се подхранват тези цветя, имаме едни жени, които работят в едни градини и там се случват едни малко не окей за тях неща. И една от тези жени всъщност решава, че тя не може повече така, не може да живее в този свят и буквално решава да, да стигне до край. Той със сигурно засяга една екологична тематика и със сигурно засяга проблема за бъдещето. Проблема за бъдещето мен нещо започна да ме вълнува по време на пандемията. В един момент си дадох сметка, че ние, много, ние като човечество много сериозно трябва да си дадем сметка в какъв свят живеем, в какъв свят искаме да живеем. Сблъсках се с това, че жанра е нов за България. Иначе да, тук, за съжаление, в България има едно разбиране за кино, което за мен е твърде архаично. То е застинало някъде край на 80-те. А, не се търсят нови теми, не се търсят нови жанрове и не се пробва в нова стилистика. Да не говорим, че късометражното кино би следвало априори да е пространство за експерименти. А то дори и там не се експериментира с нови форми и нови теми. So the film is about these two old guys, very very old, like 80 plus years old. They are very bored at home, it's kind of like a lockdown period era, they're so bored and they start making these little tricks on each other, because the title is all tricks, and they, they trick each one of them, they trick each other to uh, try to convince the other one that they're dead. No. That is not that important, maybe. Yeah, and I guess also the overall message, at least for me, is like, yeah, let's not be too serious about serious stuff in general, you know. Ah, maybe the casting was the best part. Ah, yeah, yeah, the yeah, casting. Because, because like the casting, we made this, all these old people, 70 plus, and we had like a bunch of old people who actually pretended to be dead there. And so we had so much fun, even yeah. this is the best, actually it's a better movie. But, <laughs> There's know, some footage for the, for the guys, the, uh, like, the line was like, okay, uh, you have a stroke. And they were like, ah! <laughs> yes. We have some footage, which is pretty, pretty yeah. interesting. <laughs> What was the question? Uh, it was, uh, so the shooting, our shooting was like kind of challenging because um, as usual, like we didn't have enough money for what we wanted to achieve. So we had to make a lot of compromises and especially with times. So like it was shot in a, I think four and a half day. And it's like, it's a, it's a pretty ambitious thing to shoot a movie like that, 27 minutes with a lot of action, like, skateboarding and choreography in four and a half days. So it was like extremely hard. And another thing that was like very hard for us is that we had, so it's like we have a protagonist who's a professional actor, but he didn't know how to ride a, a longboard, but he actually was very dedicated to learn it. So we had to prepare him and he was like learning for months to really like do this. And then on the other hand, we had the, the young protagonists who are not professional actors, but they are professional longboarders. But this thing, which, which, which can sound like a challenge, it turned out being a very beautiful thing because they could like help each other. 
right? Like Roby could like have the guys to act professionally in front of the camera, and the guys could have the, the, like Roby to to like be confident on the board. Uh, така за, за мен най-интересният момент беше свързан с песента в филма, песента Кукичето край на влака, която въобще ни даде и заглавие на филма. А, когато още оператора ми прочета сценария и той на други да ми се обади и каза, аз много време търсих тази песен, но не я намерих. И аз как ми няма да я намериш, защото тази песен трябва да се съчини специално. След това бях, бях в а, Италия на няколко фестивала, Uh, където всъщност uh, хора ми казваха, коя е тази наша песен. Всъщност това звучи като стара италианска песен, която ние с композиторката специално за филма съчинихме. If I had to describe the film festival in three words, I would say super welcoming, if that counts as one word, um, authentic and um, very, very uh, engaged. Great, young, Lovely, lovely. I do, don't expect this kind of festival mm. before arriving, so I was very amazed by the sincerity uh, mm. uh, of your team and every detail, every smallest detail and this atmosphere at the beach is <laughs> wonderful. I love the Quarantine Film Festival, the most authentic uh, festival I've been to that is you know, driven by uh, real uh, messages and real love for uh, independent filmmaking and uh, filmmaking in general, fighting for causes that are good, so trying to make a difference and also with a very light and uh, open and uh, happy spirit, uh, so with a smile uh, <laughs> on, uh, on the face and so it's like a big family and uh, I, I, I love to be kind of part of it. <laughs> This is my first year at the festival and I absolutely love it. I had no idea when, I, when, when Kirill reached out and invited me to come. I had no idea what's going to happen and what this is about. And I'm just like, I'm, I'm like blown away. It's such a beautiful experience. I know the sign of the Quarantine Film Festival and it's this one. That was a sign, right? I thought we should do it together. <laughs> Not this one. No, no. No, but they were trying. No. Two rodents, so they're trying to take. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> like, like. Yeah, we have to do this. <laughs> ah, let's do it together. What, what it? Ah, yeah. <laughs> you have to go like this, man. So, uh, where you should be, like this? Yeah. Where you? Perfect. I'm, I'm, I'm out. No, you, <laughs> you don't need to... It's like this, like this right? Bye, quarantine. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>